why this is a product that the uh, cement and construction industry is interested in and uh, how uh, we're making it. We'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the benefits uh, of this product, uh, how it relates to the codes and specifications, uh, the actual performance of it in concrete, uh, some of the usage considerations uh, in your concrete mix designs. And then at the end, we'll uh, go through some actual uh, field applications and notable uh, or high performance structures uh, where we actually have it in uh, concrete. So, Portland limestone cement. The big question here that we have is what if there was a way for Canada to save uh, over 900,000 tons of uh, greenhouse gases a year? And this is this is the number uh, that it's figured uh, based on converting the uh, conventional Portland limestone cement or the conventional Portland uh, cement into uh, limestone cement uh, with the associated uh, reduction in emissions and uh, improvement to the sustainability of the industry. And this number here, that is roughly equivalent to taking 172,000 cars off the road or planting 23 million trees. It's a very, very significant uh, and huge, huge uh, impact that we can have in the industry. And this is on top of uh, an already 10% reduction in the greenhouse gases uh, emissions that the cement industry has accomplished over the past 20 years uh, with improvements to the, uh, the processes and operations of the uh, facility. Now, cement, we all know that's an essential ingredient that we have in concrete. And concrete is the, uh, the most widely used construction material uh, out there and the most consumed product uh, worldwide uh, next to, uh, to water, actually. Um, it's robust, reliable, widely used, and it is a very sustainable building material. We have to also consider that greenhouse gas emissions, particularly the carbon footprint, and climate change, our environmental impacts and real life concerns. And whatever the industry can do to improve the sustainability uh, of our products and our operations is a benefit uh, not only to the industry, but to the, uh, the environment as well. Now, if we look at the basic cement plant, and this is a very, very simplified uh, schematic of what's going on. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking approximately 75% limestone and 25% uh, other materials, most of those 25% being uh, industrial bry products from other industries. And uh, these raw materials, they contain calcium, silica, aluminum, and iron. And we're going to process those and combine them into calcium and aluminate silicates, which are going to react chemically with water and uh, form our concrete. Now those materials, they're uh, proportioned out uh, to meet particular chemistry requirements for the product performance. And those materials are then ground up to a uh, fineness of approximately like a, a talcum powder. And then it's going to be uh, pyroprocessed. And what happens there is uh, we run it through a preheater tower, which is a series of cyclones, to quickly get the temperature up to about 850 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to bring that temperature up to about uh, 1450 degrees Celsius, 1500 degrees Celsius uh, in the cement kiln, where what we're doing is we're extracting those raw elements, the calcium, the silica, alumina, and forming those minerals of interest uh, that uh, give the cement the properties uh, that we want. Now when you look at the raw materials and the limestone in particular, uh, the chemical uh, formulation for limestone is calcium carbonate. And with the cement manufacturer, we're interested in that calcium component uh, of it. Uh, and the CO3, what's going to happen is that's going to be flashed off and converted into carbon dioxide. Um, so after it uh, processes through the, uh, the kiln, that material, which we call clinker, is then sent to a uh, grinding mill uh, where we grind it up to a particular fineness. We add a little bit of gypsum, some other uh, minor additives for processing, such as grinding aids, and that's going to form our cement. So with every ton of uh, cement that uh, we make, uh, we're producing about 0.8 tons of carbon dioxide. 
And the, the major reasons for that are first we've got the actual uh, combustion process where the combustion products are carbon dioxide and water. But when we look at that limestone, about 43% of the mass uh, flashes off the carbon dioxide. So that carbon component uh, is flashed off so that we can extract the, uh, the calcium oxide uh, component, which is needed for the cement. And uh, as mentioned, that happens around 850 degrees uh, Celsius, which is the, uh, the calcination uh, reaction. So there's a fairly significant uh, carbon uh, component uh, to the manufacture of cement. However, if we are able to divert a portion of that limestone past the pyroprocessing stage, we can avoid that release of carbon dioxide by incorporating that mass that would have been flashed off into our actual product. Now, typically, uh, when we're looking at producing this, the overall fineness of the cement is gonna be a little bit higher for the equivalent performance. And that's because the limestone itself is a little bit softer, so it grinds up a little bit finer. And we try to grind the clinker components to roughly the same uh, fineness as what the clinker component in our conventional cement is. So what that means is that the, uh, the production rate on the mills are slowed a little bit and there's a little bit more specific grinding energy required, but that's more than offset by the lower clinker content and the related savings that we have uh, with the fuel uh, on the kiln. So, when we look at the definition of Portland limestone cement uh, under CSA A3001, Portland limestone cement is a product that is obtained by intergrinding Portland limestone cement or Portland limestone clinker and limestone to which various forms of calcium sulfate, water, and processing additions may be added at the option of the manufacturer. And the limestone uh, cements, those are designated with the suffix L. So whereas a uh, normal uh, conventional Portland lime or Portland cement uh, might be designated a type GU, the Portland limestone equivalent of that would be designated as a type GUL. Uh, the Portland limestone cement by itself is a cementitious material, and it's also and it's not considered uh, to be a blended hydraulic cement. Now, on top of that, there are some uh, requirements in CSA 2 on the, uh, the uh, quality of the limestone, and uh, that's where it requires uh, a minimum of 75% uh, calcium carbonate uh, within it. Uh, there's a few other tests uh, involved in there as well to ensure the, uh, uh, the quality uh, of that limestone. Uh, but some of those uh, in the next edition of uh, CSA uh, such as the methyl blue test and the, uh, the total organic uh, content are likely to be removed as they've shown uh, no correlation with the free thaw resistance or the uh, cement performance. So, if we look at the Portland limestone cement, the type GUL Portland limestone cement, that has been available in Canada since 2011. And this is an environmentally sustainable alternative to our traditional type GU cement. Uh, now the GUL cement, that can contain up to 15% interground limestone, whereas a conventional uh, Portland limestone cement may contain up to 5% uh, limestone within it. So what this means is that we're achieving a reduction of approximately 10% in the, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions. So that's a 10% reduction on our uh, carbon dioxide and also uh, the other emissions in there as well, such as our NOx and SOx and other uh, trace elements. We also get a reduction of the vehicular uh, fuel consumption and the material transport uh, for the handling, co uh, handling uh, of the product uh, at the plant. We uh, get a reduction of the quarried natural resource usage because uh, that material, we're not flashing off part of the mass, so that extends the, uh, the life and the sustainability of the quarries. And we get comparable strength and durability performance uh, to the traditional type GU cements, which we're going to discuss uh, very, very shortly. 
So how does it work? What are the mechanisms that we have going on uh, with this product that we're making? As mentioned, Portland, lines, or Portland cement clinker is ground uh, with up to 15% limestone, and the normal cement is ground with up to 5% limestone. The Portland limestone cements are ground a little bit finer to ensure the performance, uh, and they're also, uh, they may be uh, specialized grinding aids, uh, which can enhance the performance as well, because some of the grinding aids, particularly the ones uh, containing triiso uh, propanol amines, tend to be uh, very, very good with enhancing the, uh, the reactivity uh, of the cement. Looking under uh, CSA A3001, the performance specifications are very, very similar uh, for the Portland limestone cement as compared to the traditional uh, Portland cement. The chemical requirements may be a little bit different, reflecting the, uh, the differences in the chemistry with the, uh, uh, the limestone addition, but the physical requirements in terms of the uh, strength requirements, uh, the setting times, uh, the durability and soundness parameters and so forth are all the same uh, for both of those products. Now, when we look at it on the physical side, because we're grinding it a little bit finer, uh, the finer particle size is going to enhance the rate of reaction. And that's because we have more surface area available to react with the water for that hydration uh, mechanism. Additionally, the particle size distribution is optimized when the, uh, the limestone is interground with the, uh, the Portland uh, cement clinker. And that improves the, uh, the particle packing uh, of the, uh, the cement. So what happens is we've got the uh, finer limestone particles packing in between the, uh, the slightly larger uh, ground clinker particles, uh, reducing the, uh, the amount of void space uh, within there. Uh, finally, uh, those fines, they actually establish nucleation sites which promote that early hydration reaction. And it's uh, kind of similar to uh, if you have a pot of water uh, that you're trying to boil, if the, uh, the surface is scuffed up just a little bit, the boiling is going to happen a little bit earlier uh, because we've got those nucleation sites. And the same thing happens uh, with the cement. Because we've got those ultra fines uh, in there, uh, the hydration reaction is going to kick in uh, a little bit stronger uh, during the early stages because of that. Now on the chemical side, uh, we've got some mechanisms going on there as well. Uh, and what happens is we form carboaluminates during the hydration reaction, and that's a, a reaction from the calcium carbonate from the limestone and the aluminate phases uh, from the clinker, which is going to help reduce the, uh, the porosity of the concrete further. And what's happening is uh, we're converting the, uh, the clinker monosulfate into a monocarboaluminate, which improves the density and it helps to stabilize the etronite phases and increase the volume of the hydrates and improve the, uh, the density uh, and porosity of the, uh, the final product. Additionally, on top of that, the slag activity is also slightly enhanced with the limestone cement because we have some synergistic effects and stabilize the, uh, the sulfoaluminate and sulfoferric phases uh, within there because the, uh, the SCMs, such as the slag, they have a relatively high aluminate component and that reacts very, very nicely uh, with the limestone to uh, further uh, densify the, uh, the product. And what we tend to see is that the, the Portland limestone cements are actually slightly more uh, reactive with the, uh, the slag component and we get a uh, further improvement uh, to it than you would with a conventional uh, Portland cement. And if we take a look on what's actually happening uh, chemically, we can see uh, with this graph here the, uh, the volumes of the hydrate phases where as we increase the, uh, the carbonate component in there, we start to convert that monosulfate into the monocarboaluminate, and uh, we actually improve the, uh, the density uh, of the, uh, the, the, uh, the cement paste uh, 
uh, iterated uh, matrix. So what happens is that the uh, physical and the chemical benefits from the Portland limestone cement manufacture offset that lower clinker composition and give us an end product that's comparable in performance to the regular Portland cement. And this gives us a win-win situation uh, on the sustainability front for both the industry and the end user while still maintaining the same high level of performance uh, with the cements that we have here in uh, Canada. Now looking at the Portland limestone cements and the standards and codes, uh, it is approved in the Canadian uh, codes and standards. It's been adopted into the Canadian cement specification, which is CSA uh, A3000, and uh, we have the, uh, the type GUL cement, which is the uh, equivalent to the, uh, the type GU cement. It's been adopted into uh, the concrete specification, which is CSA A23.1. It's been adopted into the National Building Code of Canada, as well as the Ontario Building Code. It's been uh, recently adopted into OPSS 1350 Muni, and it is recognized by the Ministry of Transport in Ontario on the, uh, the designated source material uh, list. Now with the OPS S1350 uh, uh, Provincial, it is allowed under there, even though it's not specifically spelled out, uh, but you can use it on the provincial uh, project if you ask uh, permission uh, for that. And in addition to uh, the work that's been done in Canada, this product actually uh, originated in Europe, and they have experience with the uh, Portland limestone cements in Europe for over 40 years. Uh, and a lot of the, the work there has been uh, brought over and aided in the, uh, the research uh, that we've done here uh, in Canada. Now, uh, for some of the usage considerations uh, when adopting it into your concrete mixes, uh, the concrete performance uh, specifications for both the Portland limestone cements and the Portland cements are very, very similar in uh, A3000 and A23.1. And the mix designs themselves are very similar. Essentially, what you can do is basically swap out whatever your uh, Portland cement uh, content is in your mix and use the same number for your Portland limestone cement. The admixture doses are very similar, although you might see maybe a 10 to 15% uh, higher uh, requirement for maybe the water reducers or super plasticizers or air and trainer if the uh, uh, cement specific surface area is a little bit higher. But as mentioned, uh, with some of the grinding aids, they've been able to uh, uh, produce uh, both those products uh, to a fairly similar range and you won't see uh, too, too much of a change on the admixture dose. Now, with the feedback that we've had in the field, uh, it has been remarked that it does improve the, uh, the pumpability uh, of the concrete, particularly on some of the leaner mixes. And uh, one of the, uh, the comments that I've heard back a number of times, actually, is that it improves the, uh, the finish and makes it a little bit creamier. And uh, this is something that, uh, you know, when I was talking with one of the, uh, the batchers, uh, he was mentioning that a number of his residential guys uh, we're saying that the uh, the GUL cement was a lot creamier and they preferred that. And, you know, at first I thought he was just pulling my leg because I was the cement guy. Uh, but then another one of the batches mentioned it. A few of the, uh, the drivers had mentioned it. And I'd actually uh, witnessed a few calls where uh, some of their customers were actually asking for the GUL cement uh, by name. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, it, it does seem to be well accepted uh, by those in the field uh, that are using it. Now, in terms of the effects on the fresh concrete, the, uh, the workability and the water demand are very, very similar. And what we've got here is uh, two charts showing the, uh, the normal consistency for uh, type GU cement 
and the normal consistency for the type GUL cement. And the normal consistency, that's the test uh, that we run under uh, CSA A3000. And it's a measurement of how much water, or the, the water cement ratio, uh, that is required to bring a new cement paste to a standard penetration level by a bycat plunger. And this is kind of a similar concept to uh, the slump or, or workability. Now normally, uh, as the, uh, the fineness of the product increases, uh, which we typically measure by the uh, blame specific surface area, uh, we tend to get an increase uh, to the normal consistency. But with the Portland limestone cements, uh, because we've optimized that particle packing and because the limestone improves the workability uh, a little bit uh, initially because it's a relatively inert product in its fresh state but contributes in the hardened state, we get similar uh, results for the uh, the water demand. And as we can see here with these two graphs, they're both hovering around the 26.5 to 27% uh, to get that the standard penetration level. And additionally, when we look at it in concrete, the uh, the slump uh, with the Portland limestone cement or the Portland cement, they're, they're pretty much the, uh, the same thing. Now when we look at the setting times, uh, again, those are, are comparable between the, uh, the limestone cements and the uh, conventional cements. And this uh, graph here, it shows the uh, limestone cement and a uh, regular cement with the uh, three different uh, super plasticizers and the, uh, the setting times uh, for them, both the initial and the final setting times. And as we can see, uh, as the limestone component increases uh, across the bottom, the setting times stay roughly the same. And the reason for that is because the setting times are controlled uh, by the optimization of the gypsum that we add in while we're grinding the, uh, the cement. As the, the gypsum controls the, uh, the initial solubility of some of those uh, early hydration products for the first few hours. And that accounts for the, uh, the changes in the blame and the chemical composition uh, of the cement. Now, if we look at the, uh, the bleeding characteristics, they're very, very similar as well, too, uh, in concrete. And uh, whether it's a limestone cement or a conventional cement, what they found is that the bleeding is directly proportional to the fineness of the product, regardless of uh, what the, uh, the exact composition uh, of the product is, as we can see on uh, this graph here. Now, when we look at strength development, the, uh, the strength development of the uh, Portland limestone cements and the conventional cements are very similar in both the cement tubes and in the concrete. Uh, we've got two graphs here. The first one on the, the left-hand side, those are showing the strength uh, if the cements are ground to a constant uh, blame. But what we're actually doing is we're, we're trying to uh, grind to a constant 325 mesh, which is the 45 micron, because that's where you get the, uh, the similar strength performance. When you look at just the, uh, the blame, because that limestone component is softer and it grinds preferentially, uh, the blame might be a little bit higher to, uh, to get that uh, same strength performance. On to the next uh, graph. Again, this is showing some concrete mixes uh, with a water cement ratio uh, around 0.5. Uh, with different blains on the Portland limestone cement going uh, from 450 up to uh, 580 compared to a, a conventional Portland cement with a blane of around uh, 380. And as we can see, the, uh, the later age strengths uh, with 28 days and 56 days, they're fairly similar across all the, the blane levels, uh, but you tend to get more of a, an impact on the, uh, the early age uh, strength with that. So when you look at a, a normal uh, conventional Portland limestone cement that might be around a 380 blame, an equivalent Portland limestone cement in terms of performance might be around a, a 450 blame, uh, for example. 
Now moving on, we also uh, get the improved performance with the, uh, the supplementary materials. Uh, and we can see uh, here that at the, with 35% slag or 20% fly ash, uh, we actually uh, get a little bit of an enhancement uh, on the strength compared to the, uh, the regular Portland cement. And the reason for that, again, is because we have more alumina uh, available from the supplementary materials to form more of those carboaluminates. So what you might typically see is that if you have a Portland limestone cement and a Portland cement, and they're both, uh, you know, straight mixes might uh, achieve, uh, say, for example, 40 MPA. If you were to put slag uh, into that, uh, the conventional cement might hit 44 MPA, whereas the Portland limestone cement might hit 45 or 46 MPA. We get a very, very slight uh, improvement uh, with the supplementary material. Looking at shrinkage, uh, the shrinkage they found has actually been slightly improved, although still within uh, the same range. Uh, and the reason for that is because we've uh, optimized the, uh, the powder's particle size distribution uh, to reduce the amount of void space uh, in there that we need to, uh, to fill uh, with the water. Um, now looking at this graph, we can see the, uh, the cement with the lowest shrinkage was the uh, straight 100% uh, type GU mix, whereas those that contain uh, the limestone cements or uh, the limestone cements and supplementary materials performed a little bit better. Looking at the permeability or the, uh, the rapid chloride permeability, again, you get the very, very similar performance. Uh, and those uh, results, they're typically more governed uh, by your water to cement ratio, the lower the better, and the amount of uh, supplementary materials on there. Whether it's with the Portland cement or the Portland limestone cement, we don't see a, a significant uh, impact there. It's more driven by the overall concrete mix design, as you would expect. Now, we also did some testing. Uh, a few years back on some high performance concrete mixtures because we were doing uh, a lot of conventional concrete mixtures and we decided uh, just for fun let's try making a, a 50 MPA air entrained mix with GU or GUL and a 60 MPA uh, non entrained uh, non air entrained SCC mix and just see how the uh, the type GU and the type GUL uh, uh, compare to each other. Uh, now, looking at these, uh, for the SCC mixes, we can see the uh, performance is very, very similar. Uh, one had a slump flow of 625 millimeters, the other 585 millimeters. And when we look at the, uh, the strengths, we can actually see in this example, the, uh, the GUL cement, the limestone cement, actually performed one or two MPA higher uh, than the, uh, the GU. Uh, mix, which I would consider to be roughly the uh, the same performance, and uh, the shrinkage on the uh, uh, the GUL uh, mix was actually a little bit lower, uh, but still within that same range uh, too. On the air entrained mixes, uh, again we get the similar performance uh, for the uh, GUL mix. We actually had to uh, to correct that trial because initially we went with a slightly higher uh, air dosage to it, uh, expecting that the uh, requirement for the air training agent would be higher, uh, but we actually overshot a little bit on that and then had to, uh, to bring that down. And when we did, again, the, uh, the strength performance was very, very similar between the, uh, the GU uh, and the GUL, with the, the GUL being, you know, just slightly higher, but again, in that same sort of uh, range. Uh, cylinders, they were sent uh, to a laboratory to uh, do a, a petrographic analysis, and we can see that the uh, the air contents uh, and the paste contents, the uh, specific surface areas, and the spacing factors for the two products again were very very uh, similar. And uh, with uh, the RCP results, where we use the uh, the resistivity uh, meter, which gives us uh, a correlated indication of the RCP. Again, we can see uh, the results. They 
line up very, very closely uh, with one another, with the GUL being just slightly better uh, than the, uh, the type GU. Looking at the freeze thaw and salt scaling performance, again, the performance is uh, similar. Um, fundamentally, this is, again is going to be uh, a function of the, uh, the concrete uh, mix itself, ensuring that we're using proper aggregates, that the finishing is performed correct, that we've got a, the proper uh, water to cement ratio. Uh, we can see that the uh, salt scaling mass loss, they perform fairly similar. Um, these results, you know, they're, they, they can somewhat uh, be sporadic sometimes because a lot of it depends on the, uh, the finishing method itself. We can see in one case the, uh, the Portland limestone cement and slag mix performed the best, while the, the straight Portland limestone cement uh, performed the worst, but in general uh, they're comparable. And when we look at the, uh, the free thaw prism bars, uh, again the mass loss on those is uh, very, very similar. Uh, where the, uh, the mass loss for the type GUL was around 0.05% and with the regular type GU was around 0.08% uh, for the rapid freeze thaw specimens after uh, 302 cycles. Carbonation, uh, the depth of carbonation for both of those products, the uh, regular uh, Portland cement and the Portland limestone cement, uh, they found that the depth uh, is going to be similar for those when the concrete achieves uh, similar strength. And of course, the, uh, the cements uh, here in Canada, that's the goal to achieve a similar strength, have a similar performance uh, in the concrete uh, with the two products. Uh, ASR, the, uh, the alkali aggregate reactivity, again, uh, we have similar uh, performance characteristics uh, to that, whether we're looking at the accelerated uh, mortar bars or the, uh, the concrete prism or accelerated concrete prism test. Uh, and again, those fundamentally uh, are going to be uh, more dependent on the concrete mix design uh, that you're using, the amount of supplementaries that you have in there, and of course, uh, just using a good high quality aggregate source uh, to begin with. Abrasion resistance for the uh, Portland limestone cements. Again, this one uh, they found it is similar to the conventional cements uh, when we get uh, concrete uh, at similar strength uh, as well. And when they line those two up based on strength rather than uh, the type of cement, we can see again we have some uh, trends. Uh, in there, uh, when we look at the uh, the cube strength compared to the uh, the abrasion uh, depth on there, sulfate resistance is uh, very similar uh, with the uh, the limestone cement. Now, the previous versions of CSA they restricted the use of uh, the Portland limestone cement uh, in the sulfate environment, where there was some uh, extra testing. Uh, a new test method and uh, some prescriptive requirements in there if one wanted to use a Portland limestone cement in the sulfate environment. And the concern was with the Thomasite attack uh, in cold weather conditions. And that's a particular form of sulfate attack where the uh, calcium silicate hydrate uh, gel, which is the, the hydration uh, product from the cement and water, reacts with the sulfates uh, in a soil and the limestone carbonates to form thomasite, uh, which weakens the uh, cement product matrix. Now, a two-year cold temperature sulfate expansion was developed, uh, but what they found was that many of the uh, high sulfate uh, resisting cements, uh, particularly out west, and the, uh, the type GU high volume SCM blends with a very solid history uh, of performance were also failing on this new test method uh, that they had developed. And it was determined that the, the test method as put in uh, was much too aggressive and uh, generating a lot of uh, false positives on that. They also found out uh, with further research that the atomicite formation only occurs after the initial sulfate attack. And in addition to the existing type GU mix designs working well in the field, 
the Portland limestone uh, cement based mix designs have performed very uh, well uh, uh, too as the traditional uh, solution uh, that we have in the uh, A3000C8 test. So uh, the cold temperature test method, it's going to be removed uh, or likely or that, excuse me, it's going to be removed uh, in the next revision of CSA and restrictions on the minimum uh, supplementary uh, replacement levels are going to be lifted on that. And we're going to have a uh, performance focus uh, on the concrete uh, again instead of having all of these prescriptive measures uh, in place. And if we look at some of the, uh, the test results uh, with this, if we look at the, uh, the regular uh, C8 sulfate testing, uh, we can see here that the, uh, the Portland limestone cements and the uh, uh, regular cements, they perform very, very similar. And in this case, the, uh, the one uh, Portland limestone cement with 60% flake, it actually performs the, uh, the best. But uh, again, I would consider that all within sort of that same range. Now, when we look at that uh, cold temperature test method, we actually did some experimentation with uh, uh, the University of Toronto and uh, did a, a modified version of that. And uh, what the issue uh, with that cold temperature test was uh, that we were taking these mixes and uh, once they achieved 20 MPA, throwing them into the sulfate solution. Uh, and the issue with that is that the uh, these uh, concrete specimens are fairly immature, and the, uh, the supplementary materials, the slags, the fly ashes, etc., they haven't really had a chance to uh, kick in and start doing their thing and improving the durability of the concrete. But once we uh, took a look at that the cold temperature test and modified it with uh, a, a seven day cure at 38 degrees Celsius to help the slag to activate we can see that the, the GU and the GUL cements, again, they perform uh, very, very similar. So moving on, uh, we'll talk a little bit about some notable structures uh, that have uh, Portland limestone cements uh, within them. The first is the, uh, the Bayshore Shopping Center uh, up in Ottawa, which has been poured between 2011 and 2000, uh, 2016. And this was a $200 million uh, expansion uh, project. And that uh, particular shopping center, it's got uh, two, over 200 retailers, uh, 600 million customers uh, per year. And this was a uh, four-phase teardown and uh, replace with a new four-story structure. And the total volume of uh, this project was approximately 64,000 cubic meters of concrete. Uh, that was poured by uh, Hanson Ready Mix. And uh, they used a, a type GUL uh, concrete mix with 40 to 60% uh, slag replacement because uh, there were a number of wrap slabs in there uh, where the, uh, the heat uh, hydration had to be controlled and using a, a 40 millimeter of limestone. So on this project, we had low heat requirements. There were the requirements for less than 0.04% linear shrinkage and salt scaling requirements and an RCP requirement of less than uh, 1,000 coulombs. And with this project, uh, we had three uh, foot thick grass slabs, uh, four parquets with uh, 35 C1 mixes and up to uh, 55 MPA concrete. Looking at the uh, next project, we have the, uh, the YMCA building and retaining wall uh, in Brantford, uh, which was done uh, between 2016 and 2017. This is a $68 million project uh, with over 122,000 square feet, five-story athletic and recreation center. Uh, and this uh, involved uh, over uh, 7,500 cubic meters of various concrete mixes poured by uh, Hanson Ready Mix. Uh, these mixes, they used uh, between 75 to 80 percent type GUL cement with 20 to 25 percent slag and 20 millimeter limestone. Uh, the mixes were uh, 25N, 32C2, uh, 35N or 35F2, uh, and a 50F2 mix. 
And uh, that 50 F2 mix, that was uh, for a retaining wall, uh, which was part of the reason why this uh, design was so challenging, because there's a three-story drop towards the Grand River Basin. So that retaining wall, which is approximately 1,200 cubic meters uh, and two and a half feet thick, is basically holding up the, uh, the downtown uh, of Brantford. Uh, other mixes on that project involved, uh, you know, your typical footing, slabs, walls, columns, uh, and some higherly uh, crane pads. And that 50 MPA mix, uh, it was hitting uh, 60 MPA uh, at the 56-day mark, so performing very, very well. The next project is the, uh, the Pan Am Soccer Stadium in Hamilton, which was poured between 2013-2014. Uh, known as Tim Hortons Field. That was a $146 million project for a multi-purpose stadium uh, for the, uh, the Pan Am Olympics uh, with seating for up to uh, 40,000 people for a special event. This was a uh, total of about 11,000 cubic meters of uh, 30 different concrete mixtures poured by uh, CBM. And I believe, Alan, you were actually involved with, uh, with this project. I was, uh, yes, yes, yeah. it was a great project. Yeah, the, uh, the mixed designs on this, they ranged from uh, 10 MPA for mud mat up to uh, 35 C1 for uh, structural walls. And they had a number of specialty mixes uh, within this as well, including uh, self-consolidating concrete, uh, early strength uh, concrete, and some cold weather set uh, concrete as well. And this uh, project, the, uh, the GUL cement was uh, integral towards uh, achieving the elite silver certification uh, on this. Another project that we have uh, from CBM was the, uh, the velodrome in uh, Milton, which was done between 2013 and 14, uh, which again was built for uh, Pan Am. It's a track cycling facility and fitness facility. Uh, with seating for up to uh, 2,500, I believe, and this is the uh, this was a 63 million dollar project, and I believe it's the second UCI regulated class one uh, indoor velodrome in North America. Now this project it had over 13,000 cubic meters uh, with 34 different concrete mixes, uh, again poured by CBM, with strengths ranging from uh, 10 MPA for mud mat up to 40 C1 for uh, structural walls and uh, slabs. And again, there were some specialty projects on, or specialty mixes uh, on this, uh, including early strength and cold weather concrete. Uh, and again, uh, this, uh, this is another lead silver uh, project. Now another project, this is probably uh, one of the more famous ones, was the Highway 401 in Hero Ontario off-ramp in Mississippi had done in 2010, uh, which was poured by uh, Dufferin Construction. Uh, this was a total of 450 cubic meters of concrete uh, for an MTO project using 75% type GUL cement and 25% slag. Uh, with a 30 MPA with air concrete that was tested for the air void system, RCP, salt scaling, and dry shrinkage. And this MTO contract uh, included a 500 linear meter uh, paved section, uh, which was one lane wide. The next structure we have is uh, the Highway 6 and 403 overpass in Hamilton, Ontario, that was done in 2017. Uh, again, performed by Dufferin Construction, and this was another MTO project, and we all know uh, how tight and uh, challenging MTO projects can be. Uh, in particular, this one, which was uh, some bridge work where a majority of the work was done uh, at night. Uh, this used 75% uh, type GUL and 25% slag cement. And this was uh, 35 MPA with their concrete patchwork uh, mix design, where again, we had requirements on the air void system uh, and on the RCP. So in summary, the uh, Portland limestone cement is an environmentally sustainable alternative to the traditional Portland cement. And the performance of these products is comparable and in some cases better to the uh, traditional Portland cement. And we've got a pretty solid uh, 
the demonstration of uh, this product in the field. It's been accepted into the Canadian codes and standards and the field performance uh, has been very, very good uh, with that product. Now, if anyone is interested, uh, these are some of the reference uh, publications from uh, Portland Cement Association uh, with a number of, with a, a lot of the work uh, done by Professor Hooten and, uh, and Professor Thomas. Uh, so if anyone's interested, you can find uh, these uh, publications where it does go a little bit more uh, into depth uh, with some of the uh, information uh, that we've talked about. Well, I'd like to uh, thank everyone uh, for listening. I'd like to uh, thank the uh, Ready or Concrete Ontario uh, for providing the seminar and the Cement Association of Canada. I'd also like to thank uh, Hanson, Ready Mix, uh, Dufferin Concrete, and CBM for providing a few projects to, to uh, open up and demonstrate the performance of the product. And I'd like to uh, open it up to any questions now. Um, that's great, Mike. Uh, we do have one question. Um, does, GUL, does the GUL process increase or minimize the potential for primary doing low pressure steam curing or secondary once concrete units are placed outside or on pallets in the yard at fluorescence? Uh, no, actually what we've seen is that the, the Portland limestone cements decrease uh, the, the efflorescence uh, a little bit, and that goes back to the uh, improved particle uh, packing uh, that we get in there with the optimized uh, size distribution. Okay, another question. Are there any limitations on the use of supplementary cementing materials in the mix designs when we're using Portland limestone cement? Uh, the limitations on the uh, supplementary materials, they are the same as they are for uh, the conventional materials. So if you look at the CSA A3000, um, I believe it's up to 70% flag you're allowed. The same uh, number applies uh, for the uh, conventional cements compared to the uh, Portland limestone cements. Great. The next question, can we blend GU and GUL cements in the same mix design or is this not advisable? Uh, you could do it theoretically if you wanted, uh, but if you're looking at the MTO uh, work, that's uh, expressly forbidden by them under their uh, specifications. Um, but uh, generally you, you don't want to uh, blend products because if uh, something happens that can make it a little bit more difficult to, uh, to track down a uh, root cause. But by any means you can uh, blend the two products together and you would expect the performance to be uh, somewhere between the, uh, the two products. Yeah, that looks like that's all the questions uh, for today. Thank you very much everybody again for uh, tuning in. Um, we're right on schedule there. Hopefully your questions were answered. Um, if not, please reach out to uh, Alan Carey, myself, or Bart Cantors at the association, and we'll be sure to forward the questions to Mike uh, or anybody else who can address them. So again, thank you very much for tuning in, and enjoy the rest of your day.